polymath, polymath, and polymath. That's all I've been hearing in my private chat groups recently. And this video, I'm gonna talk about what is polymath and a little bit about security tokens as well. Before we start, I wanna say that this is not a sponsored video, but I have bought some polymath, so show alert. Anyways, everything covered here is my personal opinion, not financial advice, and of course, I'm not a certified financial advisor. So let's start off with what is polymath and why are people kind of excited for it in the private circles. The reason for this is twofold. There's push and pull factors towards issuing out security tokens overall. So last year we saw a huge growth in ICOs. It was pretty much phenomenal and pretty much unexpected by everyone who was calling it a scam. But what we see is that this trend is continuing. And when the SEC chairman was asked by the Senate in 2017, companies raised more than four billion dollars in ICOs. How many of those companies registered their ICO with the SEC? Not one. Not one. And as of today, how many companies have registered for upcoming ICOs? Not one. Not one. So we're still at zero. And folks somehow got comfortable that this was new and it was okay and it was not a security, it was just some other way to raise money. Well, I disagree with them. So there's clearly a problem here. He was ringing the alarm bells and stating that if these ICOs want to have the advantages of a public offering, then they need to be regarded and registered as securities. So right now, a lot of ICOs benefit from the fact that they're considered as utility functions and they're trying to slide between that middle ground where they can be publicly traded and of course, they will not be regarded as securities by the US government. Of course, I'm not a lawyer in this situation and there's a lot of legal kind of gray area because this technology is so new. The fact is that they're traded publicly, they're fungible, and of course, and some of them really have some security like properties. So this year, what a lot of people are feeling, especially if you're kind of been in this space for a long time, is that the movement of and the issuance of security tokens is inevitable. It's inevitable that some tokens will register as securities and of course they'll fall under SEC law. And it's inevitable that some projects will want to choose to become a security token. Well, why would they want to do that? So one of the reasons is because of the push factor, because the SEC and regulations are coming, but there are also pull factors as well. A lot of ICOs right now cannot accept American contributions, but potentially in the future, they might want to be able to do so. So by actually registering as a security token in the States, it might bring a greater audience and maybe even bigger funding. So there's a pull factor as well. And lastly, of course, recently we've seen in Hong Kong that the Hong Kong um, Securities and Futures Commission, SFC, they've been trying to crack down and remove security tokens that are traded on exchanges as well. So there's another push factor in the fact that securities tokens can't be traded right now and we need a new platform for security tokens. So how does Polymath have to play in this? Well, they're a security platform project. They want to be the platform which all security tokens are on. Well, it's kind of funny because they're a kind of a platform built on top of Ethereum. So everything is still living on Ethereum. But what they're proposing is a grand new change from the fundamental protocol level. The ERC20 token was designed so it can be compatible with exchanges and new wallets. So it contains basic features like exchanging, trading, and of course issuing. But it doesn't have the necessary framework for security based tokens because security law is very, very strict. And what Polymath is trying to do is it's trying to issue out a new standard called the ST20 and that by the new token standard has already baked in KYC, AML on all these legal compliance issues. So that means, of course, they might be only tradable to accounts that are also approved accredited investors and it has other legal features built into that token and has additional features such as voting. So right now, if you buy stocks, you're you can have vote privileges and it has these features built into the token and you can do that via the blockchain. So it has all these kind of, it's combining the ERC20 standard, what we have there, but on top of that, adding the necessary features for legal compliance to be security tokens. So that by itself is very interesting. We have been used to ERC20 tokens, but 
what they're trying to do is they're trying to allow an insurance of new type of tokens. And I do want to say one thing here, which is that there hasn't been the issuance of an SD20 token yet. So this is designing the road for the future, but cars have not driven on this road yet. And this is the most interesting thing about this project, because in terms of what they're trying to do, they're trying to do four layers of um, protocol building, of legal compliance, of application and of exchange. But what's interesting is that they're issuing their own token called the Poly token, and it's a utility token, and it's using the ERC20 standard. So I do want to point this out for you guys that they are kind of like trying to build the road for the future, but they're not driving on that road yet. The reason why is because that first car to go on this road hasn't been built yet. We still don't have the kind of legal knowledge and there hasn't been a project that's really crossing into the security field just yet. So far, zero security tokens have been registered in the States. But Polymath wants to be there if someone else wants to try this. This is why a lot of people are talking about it because they see that this is the inevitable future and they feel like Polymath provides a framework to be there to do so. But at the same time, I do want everyone to realize that currently there are zero security tokens and crossing that bridge going and becoming that first security token is going to be a really huge bridge. I, in fact, have lawyer friends that work with securities and list medium sized companies on exchanges, and they can just basically say that the legal process is a long time. It's not just about issuing a white paper and you can update that white paper over time. It's always about just making sure every line on that paper, the legal document, the information provided is accurate. And he's basically constantly at a printer every day. He's basically sleeps at the printers printing those documents for investors. So this is going to be what's going to be hard. And it's quite unknown right now as to how long it's going to take for the first security to token to come out. But what people are predicting is if once that road is crossed, that knowledge can be shared. And eventually there'll be a lot more security tokens in play because of a the push factor that we have with new regulations and the pull factor of basically more investors and more potential features. I mean, when you buy a token, you kind of expect that project to do well and get shares from that project. So you people really want security like features. So this is kind of why Poly is both hot and contested at this current moment. There's people that believe that maybe security tokens can't be issued or maybe there might be another solution. We recently seen in Gibraltar that, well, they might want to issue out new regulations specific for ICOs. This might not be the case with the states though, because in the states, creating new law takes a long, long time and token technology is being pushed to the forefront. So maybe compliance with the law is more important. We also saw some new technology coming on the token front as well. I think Vitalik proposed the DA ICO. So this new style of combination of the decentralized autonomous organization and ICOs. So now it can be formed as kind of a company and a new project which is a very interesting concept. But yet again, does that constitute to a security? Because the first DAO, when DAO was first created, it was classified as a security by the SEC. So now we're at the stage where we have competing technologies and we have different ways to implement things. But what is clear is that the SEC is definitely coming and they're paying a lot of attention to what's happening on this front. In terms of the Polymath token, Polymath didn't have an ICO. So that's why in the general public, not many people know about it, but in a private circles, people are very interested because they want to follow what's happening with security tokens. So in terms of what they did, they did an airdrop to increase interest in it, but it's not as cool as a full public sale. In terms of listings right now, it's just got listed on KuCoin and that's why there's so much more interest into this right now. And I do want to voice my opinion, which is that you definitely want to research the hell out of Polymath and what they're trying to do. This is just covering the start of this whole new Pandora's box called security tokens. There's going to be a lot more regulations coming into play. So definitely check out what they're trying to do in terms of their foundation and technology. And then on top of that, you definitely want to be aware of what's happening in the the kind of metal climate with ICOs. My personal opinion is that this is a mega big bet. So if you're very bullish on the fact that security tokens are going to come into play, I think that Polymath is going to provide the foundation for it. There's no other project that's really leading this field right now. And Polymath seems to provide a good solution. 
That said, it's not going to be a one button click. So on their website, they're very much like, okay, you can create a new token by these few steps and you don't really need much technical knowledge. But I actually think that's not true. For a good token to be managed, it needs to be audited. It needs to have someone with a technical background behind it. And it's this emergence of both technology and the old traditional markets. There's also additional applications because security tokens don't have to be for a specific company, but they could be for a specific project. And this is quite important because sometimes big companies have multiple projects and some projects are just absolute failures, whilst others are pretty profitable. So maybe by choosing the correct one, it might be even more fun and gives a lot of investors flexibility. So I definitely see the advantages of having something like this in the blockchain and security based tokens. But I definitely see that there's a huge, huge road ahead and it might take a lot a long time before this can be realized. I'm definitely going to follow this up in the future. I would love to hear what you guys think about security based tokens. Are you guys very interested in security based tokens? And if so, why are you interested in security based tokens? Are you interested in the tradable aspect of that or about the dividend or the voting aspect of it? I'd love to hear that in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to click the subscribe button, subscribe to this channel and click the little notification bell to be notified of new videos when they get released. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.